VIP Access. VIP Access with Aniko and Africa Loud. Welcome back to VIP Access. Thank you so much for your company every other week. Today's show is going to be epic because I have an amazing woman, a very inspiring artist and musician from Uganda. I always love when I take you guys to Uganda. I think the last Ugandan artist we had here on the podcast was uh, Flex the Paper. Um, you know, it, it was really cool. We were talking about hip hop. So it's really nice now that we want to cross over to other genres like Afrobeat, Ama Piano. This specific artist has been very successful in the recent years. But before that, she has a very powerful story of how she rose to fame. You know, she's um, actually been hustling, working in various industries. So we're going to be talking about that. You probably know her from successful songs and hits like Be Timba, Wanting Me, and To Party. Now you know who I'm talking about. Welcome, Pia Pons. Thank you so much, Aniko. I'm so happy to be here. Hey, baby girl. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, let me just say that I'm such a fan of yours because Thank of you. everything you exude. Thank you. I think you are an embodiment of you know, a young, successful African woman, but also super stylish and fashionable. Thank you so much. <laughs> Tell me, how are you doing? How are you feeling? I'm doing good. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy to be here, first of all. It means the most to me to be here in your presence because I'm a fan as well. I'm a fan of Aniko. So I'm so happy to be here. Kenya is beautiful. It's, um, I love the weather, though in the night it gets so cold and I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> It's always so hot in um, Uganda. Yeah, Uganda, our temperatures are uh, very friendly. Mm. Maybe uh, because I'm used to it. Yeah. Where, where are my manners? I'm, I was supposed to tell you something. Chiri chichia? Je chiri. Chiri okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ugandans know what you're talking about. Yeah. So, Karibu Kenya, welcome. Asante sana. How is Uganda? Uganda is beautiful. It's, um, you know, Uganda. Yeah. Chaotic. It's chaos. <laughs> When they Dusty. when they open the, the 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 roads and all the motorbikes are crossing and all of them are crisscrossing, it's the craziest thing. I but it's so right. well coordinated. The chaos have we a coordinated way. <laughs> <laughs> Experience in the chaos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I mean, congratulations on everything. Thank I you think so much. you know you've been around, you know, singing, collaborating with various artists. And um, I feel like your 2020 EP, To Pate, was like, you know, your breakthrough record. Obviously, there Definitely. was a song, To Pate, in there, which um, became such a huge song. Once it was released, um, there was a video clip that was posted by someone really enjoying. And was, he was like, it's Friday, um, To Pate, you know, it's Friday. Yeah. And, and, and that thing really trended. So if you could... Tell me and tell us about that. Like, did you ever think, you know, that would happen to your song? And did you think that when I'm releasing my EP, the lead track is going to end up being my life, my career changer? When we were recording the EP, we had, like, a bunch of songs, so many on the, on the, on the EP. They were, like, it was first an album. So we had, like, ten songs. Mm. And then... I hadn't yet recorded two parts, like the, the idea hadn't popped in. When I did record the song though, it was during the pandemic, 3 a.m. in the morning, there was like so many friends of mine at the studio. And then right after the production, we take the demo outside to, you know, let people vibe and mm -hmm. like ask them, how do you think about this song? Their reaction was so, it was so obvious their reaction, because when the song started straight from the beginning, doo -doo 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 -doo, mm. people were just screaming. They were like, this is a hit. <laughs> they lifted me up. They are like, you've broken through. But then when we released the EP, we waited for that reaction from the oh. people. And it took so long. I, I started thinking, oh, you know what? Let's just release other music, because this is not working. But that was the pandemic, and this was a party song. Mm. So we were in a lockdown, nobody's moving. Uh, I just like, okay, I can enjoy this song with my family and friends because 
the world is not getting it. But then challenges started coming in at, after like eight months of the song's release. There was so many challenges. Go Like I would just receive challenges on my phone, people vibing to the song. And I'm like, is this song growing? Could this song be the song? And then MC Africa's challenge came in. Came in I think it was March when I got that challenge. I'm like, wow, this this guy seems to be the owner of the song. He's enjoying it. He's explaining exactly like the mood he has <laughs> is really bringing out what I wanted people to feel when they listen to the song. I don't know how it happened when it went viral. Because it went viral a few months after I had received it. So it's going viral on TikTok. I have no idea. And then I wake up one morning, I'm trending on t Twitter. I'm like, what? What is happening? And then, you know when you've prayed for something for a very long time, and you've wanted it so badly, and you've fasted, you've done everything. You've, you're like, I'm going to put everything I can in this. But then it's not working. And then it comes at the least, because I really least expected mm -hmm. it. And then was number one. It was number one on iTunes for six weeks. That's like a record broken by a Ugandan artist. And then it went to Netflix as well on Young Africa, Young, um, young Famous and Young Africa. Famous in Africa. Yes. Mm -hmm. Episode six, season one. I, Congratulations. I, <laughs> thank you. I just, I, I really was humbled. Like the success of the song humbles me so much. And then it gives me this hope that if Four years in the music, three years in the in the music career, I can do that much. That much can happen to a song of mine. Then I'm going to be a big star. So it basically kick-started my star zone and how far I want to hit in my career. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. And after that happened, when you went viral, you quickly thought, I need to release a remix. Yeah. How did that come about? Like, what what was the idea to you know do it with? I mean, MC Africa was you didn't even have to think about it. But what about Eddie Kenzo? So when people, very many people in Uganda, like fans, can do a, a video and it goes viral mm. for different artists. Mm. But for this gentleman, um, when he came, because he was in Bali, so I called him to our studio at ABM in Muyenga. When he came. Uh, I asked him, what do you think I can give you to thank you for this amazing record-breaking viral video? Mm. It was so viral. So he's like, I'd like to sing with you. <laughs> <laughs> I asked him, are you an artist? He's like, no, I'm an MC. You can just put me in the song and we vibe. And then after like a day or two, he told me, by the way, I would like to meet with Eddie Kenzo because Eddie Kenzo launched my... Um, music career uh, in 2018. So he's like, you know, every time we are vibing to your music, we we really like give the thanks back to the guy who made us know you. Most Ugandans know me from. He's uh, he signed me and he brought me to the world. And then later I exited the label, of course. But then we stayed very close. So I took MC Africa to Eddie Kenzo's studio. When I did, we came out with... <laughs> <laughs> we what came a beautiful with the coming together, yeah. right? It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a collaboration and a remix, but there's a story to it. Yeah. MC Africa was out, like, he was so excited. He was so happy. He was screaming in the song. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we, re we released with the video. People... If you see like a video he was in, mm. he was looking so rushed, so, so, like so, so humble. Yeah. And then in the video, we gave him a suit. Of course. <laughs> and he was all styled up. He's like, you guys don't know what you've done for me. Like, I just like to see him really happy because he had made, he doesn't know what he did for me. He doesn't know how much um, that viral video did for me. So I could, that's the least I could do. Mm. Yeah. And you say he, he doesn't know what he did for you or what that viral hit did for you or this song. What did it do for you? Because I've seen a lot of your interviews and you said before this song became as big as it did, I actually was having a lot of trouble even with paying rent and things like that. So what did it do for you? What, what changed like massively? 
Okay, so during the pandemic, we as Ugandan art, I don't know about Kenya, but for us, we were put on lockdown for from 2020, 2021, and we were opened in 2022. Mm. So that's two years, no business, no work, nothing. And you know, I wasn't yet uh, an artist that was making money yet. I was still struggling. So the pandemic made it worse. So worse, I could eat porridge and posho on the same meal. Like, <laughs> porridge is the, f the drink and posho is the, eat, the food. So I was really struggling. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times I said I'm giving up, I'm giving up, I'm done with this. Maybe I can go and do a normal job. I can go and uh, be a PR. <laughs> I can give Shall Aniko a run for her money. <laughs> I was just in a very bad place. And um, in the pandemic, I think, I don't know what a depression is, but I really was close to that. I was going through so much. You know, when you're, they say mid-20s are difficult years. I, mine were, it was just so special in the fact, that, in the way that you have nothing to eat. You have no money. You have no vision and then your music that you're releasing you know music you need a lot of money to push it's it expensive. you need to position yourself you need so everything was going north and then when to party became a, a hit song i started eating some chicken <laughs> chips <laughs> <laughs> i started using some good lotion i'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> Things were not doing. My skin was bad. I had like acne all over. Because of the stress. Because yeah. the stress also causes like acne, acne. sometimes and yeah. many times. I looked so ugly. I think I feel like that was the ugliest I've ever been. And then I was, you know how you lose just self-esteem. Mm. And even if someone calls you for an interview, you're just like, ah, ah. Yeah. That's how I was. Then... I was also not so loved back home. Mm. I was, you know, this artist who has like a lot of controversy. Nobody really says anything good about you. Like if there is news to being made about you, you know very well it's going to be bad news. And bad news is attractive. People would give it a lot of attention. Of course, of course. So I would just not fit in so much. And then after the breakthrough of Tupate, my chest was like up in the open. I was feeling myself. I was making money from my music. I drew my heart for a long time. My management was so happy. Now they start to write stories to party is <laughs> yes, number one for another good week. Are being made about me. <laughs> <laughs> they were calling me the miracle, the miracle girl, like that person wow. who everybody thought couldn't but did. Amazing. So I was like a testimony. I would people would ask me stuff and they would expect me to speak a lot of sense to them. <laughs> Really? Yeah. And actually, when the Netflix happened, because that was the maximum, that was the highest Height Tupate of the went. success of Tupate, yeah. you know, getting on that Pan African kind of platform. Yes. yes. Now my family started calling. Eh? They're like, we apologize for <laughs> <laughs> not believing in you. <laughs> my family didn't believe in me ever. Really? At all. Yeah. Until when Tupate was a hit. That's when they. Even like the elders in the family, that's when they started saying, oh my God, we didn't believe in you. We now see what you're doing. My estranged dad started calling me and he wants me now as his daughter. Basically, it really changed my life, 360. Wow. So how did you handle that, you know, success and almost like overnight fame? You know, it's like you were famous, but now you are famous once again over something you worked so hard for that, you prayed for. So it's kind of a different um, experience with fame. Now it's positive. Now it's yeah. the fame that you wanted. Yeah. Nobody wants everyone to be writing uh, negative things about, about them. them. Yeah. Of course, for me, I didn't feel like it was overnight. I felt like I've worked so hard for this. I deserve this. But so many people who did not know the back the background story, they don't know the hustle, they don't know the sacrifices. They would say, um, you, you, you just, this just happened. You, you're like, they don't know exactly what I went through to achieve what I achieved. Mm -hmm. But um, it made, made me very humble in a way. I was already a very humble person. Yeah. But when I saw all this love from people, which I never, by the way, I needed the love from the fans than the money. Like money didn't make so much sense to me in the industry, in the music. 
I was like, I wish I could stand on stage and people scream my name and people scream my lyrics. And I went on stage 17 times and that was happening. I would leave off stage just covering my face. I want to cry. I'm like, oh my God, this is um, a blessing mm. from God. And then... Of course, you know when there is success, there is also these people who that hate you so much. Of course. They, they just feel maybe their competition or they feel, no, she doesn't belong there. She doesn't deserve that. Those ones also were there. And I would just uh, give them my side eye. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much. I feel like I'm having tea with my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, you are so real. You are Thank so you. real. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask, like, when did you know that this music thing was for you? Because I followed your career and you've been around in terms of just hustling different jobs. Like you have been an attendant at a bakery, a supervisor at a bakery. You've been you've worked at a supermarket as an as a cashier. Oh my God, you have been an Uber driver. You have sold SIM cards. <laughs> oh you God. were a clothes vendor. I'm like, come on, this, this girl really tried anything she, she could have, you know, tried. When were you doing all these things? So I, I knew I was going to be an artist when I was very young, like eight years. I knew I, I was writing songs at that age, gospel songs, like, a, you know, kiddish, but very unexpected from a kid. So I th I felt like I'm going to be a star, and I wanted to be like Rihanna or Beyonce. I would sometimes dress like Beyonce in my bedroom and get a microphone and sing and just imagine people are screaming my name. And then um, I'm, I ran away from home when I was like 14 years old. It wasn't, it wasn't um, something I wanted to do. I just wanted to like, find my dad, find my family, find who I really am. So I left my guardian's home, ran to my stepbrother's home, and I had no idea what I was going into. Like I did not know what I was starting, my, I was just landing into. Um, 15 years of age, my brother couldn't afford my tuition. He couldn't afford me a sanitary towels. You know, he's a boy, he has a family of his own. So I started to look for work. Yeah, my first job was, uh, I worked at a bakery. It was called Ntake. I worked there as a supervisor. I first worked as an attendant. And then they made me supervise because uh, I was so aggressive. <laughs> I was fired from there, I think, a month later because I could be at, I wanted to study. I wanted to be educated. And I wanted to also be an artist. I didn't want to be an artist without being educated. I of was course. Like, no, I have to prove to people that just because I love the film does not mean I don't want to put sense in my brain. So coordinating school and work got me into so many jobs and off so many jobs. So I would like go, um, I'm a supermarket attendant during the holidays. And then when it's time to go back to school, I, can I come back? Can I come back after three months? They told me, no, please don't come. <laughs> You're fired. You're fired. We need somebody <laughs> full time, okay? Yeah. So every holiday, especially third term holiday, I would make sure I have a job. I'm doing something with my life. Oh. And then I continued I continued to pursue music as well. I went to studio for the very first time in two thousand fifteen. And no, it wasn't two thousand I was fifteen. The age was fifteen. I think it was two thousand ten. So when I went to that studio, I used to like back people for money. So I come to studio, I back you up, I put harmonies, vocals, everything. I made producers, my friends, different producers. And then of course, like uh, they'll give you 20K, which is like, uh, which is like 2000, is it? I think it's like 2000 Kenya shillings. Mm. So they'll give not you- Not bad, not yeah. bad for a 15 year old starting yes, out. definitely. So I'd keep my money. I'm like, uh, I'm gonna keep my money for school. During that time, I was in Form 4, which is mm. the hardest, one of the hardest levels in of high course, school. Yeah. So I, um, what came to me was how after recording my very first song, the legend at the time in Uganda called Ragadi had the song. And then next day I came back to pick my music. It had his voice. 
And you were like, what? I could not believe it. I was like, oh my God. This was the artist. Like, you know, he was the top, 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 top artist in Uganda. He was, I could never have imagined singing with him, first of all, because he had never done a song with any girl or anyone for that matter. So when he did the recording of the song, and then I go to pick the song, the producer tells me, Ragged is not here, but he liked your your song just the way you are so much. And then he put vocals, so he played for me. I was like, no, this must be a dream. <laughs> I'm not going back to school. I'm going to just stay a musician. Like, I'm a star. Look at me. <laughs> and then we did the video a year later, and this is when he sees me for the first time. He's like, I, how old are you? <laughs> I didn't then realize I, I didn't had, like, had like two years. I told him, I'm, I'm 17. He's like, ah, you look so young. I didn't have nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I didn't have hair. <laughs> so he told his sister, and uh, he's like, can you get her maybe a wig or something? We edge her. Yeah. We get her some yeah. lipstick and stuff. Uh, so the video was done. But then when the video finished and the song dropped, the fame wasn't what I thought it was. Mm. Like, I wasn't a star. People were not saying my name on the street. Mm. I was still starving. I still needed money. I still, everything. So I went back to that hustling life and started, I don't know, I started just my usual, usual jobs. Usual jobs, those jobs for people who are not so, so educated. Yeah, selling anything you can <laughs> to anything. make the money of the day. Yes. And then... Um, 2000, I think it was 2014, there, 15, I went and got a job in ICEA as an insurance vendor. I, sh I should say that was my hardest job ever, ever. I would walk from morning to evening, and there is not a single client. There is not a single person who is ready to listen to me. There is not, ah. and then this is life insurance. You know, that's a very hard, that's really hard to sell. You, you would rather sell pens than that. So my first my first customer who accepted was called Agre. You even remember the name? Yes, definitely. Because when when you get a policy, you get I it was forty percent of that policy. Forty percent is yours. So I had one point six the minute he signed on my that was my first million in wow. my life. <laughs> and then because you have so to So impressive. You're right. Now, you That's have why to I say this girl is a hustler. <laughs> I'm even starting to think maybe I should be selling life insurance. <laughs> I know a lot of people There's who might a lot buy of money that insurance, but to get a client is a walk problem. Six months. Yeah. So this guy <laughs> looks at me and he's like, "What else do you? What else can you do? Because you don't seem like you're a here. typical insurance yes. seller. You don't seem like you're here because you want to. You seem like you're here because it's what you gotta do." Mm. So I told him, "I'm an artist." He's like, really? Let me let me hear some of your music. I played for him some of my music. I think I had like two songs. That car one from Raggedy, which I would tell everybody who cared to listen. And then I had another car single. So I told him, <laughs> he's like, you're so talented. Why aren't you in studio? I told him, I don't have the money. I don't have the management. He's like, no, I'm going to get you someone who can help you to start your career. Now, at that time, I also wanted to be at uni. So I was in a, I was conflicted. I'm mm. like, should I go for music? Should I go for uni? Should I go for music? And this guy had a lot of money and he had like so many connections, everything. If I said yes, I think my career had, would have started then. Mm. But then I said no. I said, I, I think I should go to school. Mm. I feel like school can't wait if I'm older. I will not be able to mm. be in school. But then music, I can happen anytime. True. He's like, oh my God, that was that's the wrongest thing I've ever had an artist say. <laughs> I've never had an artist choose um, education over their career in music. Their career. And I'm like, I think um, I made a wrong decision. I think I made a wrong decision. And the entire time when I was in school, at, um, finishing my, I was doing a diploma in Pa business administration. Mm. I first did public administration, then I did business administration. So when I was like in my second year, I said, you know what, I let me just go back to music. I don't know. That's how I was in music, out of music, in music, out of music. 
So this time I go to the studio and I meet my current manager, Kusame. He's like, you know what? If you've if you've really come to sing, you you're going to sing. If you've come to just, you know, record a song and go, I'm not going to give you my time. I told him, please, I beg. <laughs> <laughs> come slowly, Mr. Manager. <laughs> First day, and you're already giving me yeah. alternate uh, yeah. ultimatums. Eh? Yeah. That was 2016. Mm -hmm. Then I started singing. I started recording. I was now in studio, so serious. At that time, I was, of course, doing Uber. Mm -hmm. And I, I left Uber alone. I was like, this is not making me any money. Did, uh, did any of your Uber um, passengers recognize you as an artist or, or no, not, not really? No, not at all. At the time, I wasn't recognizable <laughs> as an artist. You know what I did with Uber? I did clothing and I decided to do male clothing because men would always want to like talk to me in some, some kind so of way. So you dress like a dude? No, no, no. I had like... Um, uh, I had um, an online men's store. Mm. So I started that one because I was doing Uber. So I said, instead of taking these guys and they're trying to throw those, you know, how guys try to hit on you mm. or something, I could uh, just sell them clothes. And then I can, wow. I can pretend I'm interested, but actually I'm just wow. selling my, uh, <laughs> my clothes. You are so brilliant. <laughs> You're like, I'm just going to open my mail shop and that's yeah. what we're going to talk about. Yeah, so the <laughs> clothes were in the boot. And the, I would so you you would if the minute you started jazz with me, I would yeah I'm listening I'm listening and then they'll say by the way I have some outfits for for men can you have a look and then <laughs> slowly by slowly clientele went up 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 I was making more money in the clothing than in the Uber. <laughs> <Hey. laughs> I I think there are different levels of of being a hustler. You are on another level. You so know, strange. most people just think of selling something, but you think of a strategy that will allow you to make the most sales yeah. in the fastest time possible. Yeah, because the rent, now at that time I was staying by myself from 16 years, I was renting. And if you know me, I wanted to be in the cute houses with a bathroom oh, inside. Of course, At least who bathroom. doesn't want to be in a cute house? <laughs> At least <laughs> not a bathroom us. inside. <laughs> <laughs> so I would... Um, while my friends were getting like outfits, <laughs> clothing, you know, like my age mates, we come to school and people are trying to like compete in fashion and everything. For me, I would be like, I actually can't afford that. I'm going to just stick to paying my rent. Of course. You guys stay with your parents. And then um, I was not even seen as someone who can dress well at that time. People started, my friends eh, started the threat. They started seeing the threat. When now I'm an artist, they're like, ah, you could dress this entire time. <laughs> You're not a tomboy. Because <laughs> I would just be in baggy jeans. I would just throw on T-shirts and go. Now I'm dressing like a Beyonce. So they would look at me like, You're a star, girl. You're a star. <laughs> so 2017 there, that's when my fashion started. People started seeing me for my fashion now. They're like, actually, there, there is a saying that, oh, you dress better than you sing. Like, of course, yeah, I have to. Because I, I don't make these clothes. I just find them and I put them together. As for the song, you have to think for that, for the song. You have to think the topic, record the song, the vocals. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> eh, fear. You are so amazing. Thank you. So from the person who used to wear baggy jeans and people and friends thought you were a tomboy to become a fashion icon. Because to me, your fashion is iconic. Thank you. You know, you are one of the celebrities I follow on IG to see what is she wearing today. Oh my God. You know, you show up, you can never confuse like, um, is this Pia or not? You're like, definitely Pia or definitely a superstar. If you walk in somewhere and doesn't, someone doesn't know who you are, they'll be like, who is that? Mm -hmm. You know, it's just inside of you. Your videos ooze a lot of fashion, you know, you. like to party, original video, you know, the remix. Um, which other video do I really like? Um, there's another one. Wanting Me? Wanting Me. Oh, my God. What was happening in that video with the big pot? Is that a real pot? Yeah, we, we actually have, I have videos. I'll show you the videos making the pot. 
We looked for a pot that size It's the biggest, it's a life-size <laughs> pot. It's as big as a human being. <laughs> Actually, one of the concepts in the video, I had to sit in the pot and I had to be dripping with um, the soup in the pot and I had to be like whining in the pot and uh, mingling. Mm. But then it seemed very unrealistic, artistic, but unrealistic. So mm. they told me, please just mingle from outside. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, you can tell even from that video, you can tell that you are very um, creative. The creative Thank direction you. is very unique. Thank you. There's a, a, a coordinated like a effort even in the styling, the fashion. You know, there's a time when the models are walking out of the building and they're wearing all this regal looking Ankara. And it's just amazing, you know, and I, and I really appreciate you and any other African and East African who does those kind of videos because um, unfortunately a lot of artists or creatives sometimes are lazy yeah. and they are very talented but then they release just really mediocre videos. So when I see somebody put in so much effort like you do, I appreciate that, Unajua, because you. someone will see that video like on MTV or whatever and they will see Africa, they'll see excellence and I think that's what I appreciate in you and a lot of other artists. And I think we as Africans, East Africans, you know, we need to strive more to um, elevate our culture, elevate our art in, you know, in, 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 in the most sophisticated way we can. I mean, yes. if, if, we, if we can do it yes. well, let's do it well. If we yes. can invest in our videos and creatives, let's invest in it. And I see you put in so much investment. Um, it must be expensive, no, to shoot such Very. a video. <laughs> Yeah, very. Uh, most of the money is going like to the out. The video? To, yeah, is no. is most of the money going to the director, or, or is it going more mainly to the wardrobe? It depends. Um, now, when I was doing wanting me, I worked with a designer in Uganda called Abaska Ijuka. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been working together. Abas has actually got me into this Africanacity sexy Africana city kind of vibe than being the other thing from, you know, I just wanted to look sexy, look amazing, and mostly sexy because I feel like I'm, I have a lot of sex appeal, I don't know. So it took me some time to embrace it, but then later I say, this is where I fit most. This is what separates me from all the people that try to look like what I'm trying to mm. do. So when we are sh when we are like doing videos, sometimes a bus is ready to say, I'm going to put an investment as well because I want you to shine as I shine. Nice. Yeah, so that's what Fatuma Asha, Abbas, that's what we do mostly. So I find that I'm doing a video concept, but I'm not spending so much on the fashion like I would. Because, because it's really expensive, and, and I, I see and I see a thread. You know, it's it's the same uh, young girl who would drive an Uber and use the opportunity to see how best to sell some clothes. In the same case scenario, you're this grown woman who is in the industry where you have to spend a lot, but you're like, how can I save on that but collaborate yeah. with likely individuals? Yeah. And they always say, if you want to go far, go with some people, but if you go alone, it will take you a long time. Thank you. So that's very smart. Thank I think you. one thing that is coming out in this interview is a lot of people might look at you as the sex appeal or the, the, the artist who was successful because of this song. But even I know now that you're not successful because of Tupate. You are successful because <laughs> you are successful. Thank you. It's all you, Thank girl. Thank you so much. Those are, those are words of encouragement. I'm telling you. I'm just like, you were successful when you were 15. Tell me another 15-year-old who's paying their apartment, working full, uh, part-time, going to school. That is really inspiring. And I, I, I give you your flowers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what's the plan for 2024? 2024 is about me um, showing my growth, showing my experience, uh, basically having people to see uh, the, I'm going to be 27, so it's to see the 27-year-old indeed, not the 23-year-old they met when I was being signed in 2018. So um, I have an album coming. I'm working on it. 
it's going to drop any time from now. And then uh, on that album is where I want to expose who I truly am, my passions, what I've grown to love, what I've grown to live, and all that stuff. But mostly my um, roots, like my African. I don't know why, but I will tell you, I'm obsessed with being an African. I am obsessed, I'm obsessed too. with being Me a Ugandan. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I watch all, all these videos on MTV base, and I'm like, why are we trying to look like what we are known? Why are we trying to um, promote? what doesn't belong yeah. to us, yet we have, like, look at your earrings. <laughs> your earrings, when I walked in, I was like, okay, this is an African woman who is so proud to be, I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna try to, like, force, because by the way, I try to do that. I try to force this urban thing on myself. And then I thought, like, no, this is not, this is not what people want from me. There is so many urban artists anyway. True. I would like to be my real self, my real peer, the real peer, what they should know, what they should expect. So in 2008, um, 2024, it's what I'm going to be up to. And then also I'm going to do collabs. Like in Kenya now, I've done three. And I want to do more in Tanzania, in Rwanda, in... Be be an East African and represent that. So that's, that's amazing. To that's do. amazing. Yeah. Um, any message you want to share to 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 anybody listening, especially those who have walked with you through this journey, um, and the dudes who bought your clothes in the Ubers, <laughs> You know this person By the way, who <laughs> during my clothing selling, there was a gentleman from a station called Galaxy FM. He became a customer of mine. Uh, he passed away last year oh, though no. but that hurt because i i used to say you have a story that backs up my story but then i also sold to people like sk mbuga who who's so i have i had like a clientele that was that even became friends and they began they began because now that gentleman the, the one who passed away he used to say um why don't you why don't you dress ladies? Why don't you do this? Why, like They would try to advise me and try to guide me here and there. I'm really thankful for those guys. Happy that I'm right now here where I am. And I'm sure most of them are proud. Even my bosses, the people that I worked for, they were so amazing. I love them. And then my friends and family. I have some family members who are not yet on, the, on board, by the way. But uh, after my Grammy, they'll come kneeling down, <laughs> saying, please, can we touch it? And then I'll say, please, first wash your hands. Eh? I'll like, <laughs> I'll give them level. <laughs> anyway, that, that kind of sometimes hurts when the people that you feel should be the of ones course, to. Of yeah. course, of course. But then I have a, a huge, huge number of people, like my manager over there, he has, we have um, a house called ABM, mm. African Bureau of Music. And in there, there is people like Peru over there who really believe in me. They really trust my, my art. I don't, like, every time I produce something, I bring something, they say, we love it, it's good. I'm like, guys, be honest, it could be <laughs> ugly. <laughs> <laughs> and and I have to say this because we are shouting out people. Shout out to your team. They do a really good job. Thank I you. receive everything you're doing. I have all your songs in my email. If you want, I'll show you. Oh you know, and God. I like that, you know, because I see them. I put them in some playlists. You know, I, oh at least God, I know what's happening. You. So even before this interview, I was talking to friends in Uganda, like, oh, I'm going to interview Pia. Tell me about her. What do you think? And they were, like, mentioning songs. And I was like, I know those songs. <laughs> so I was happy that how I knew you is how they know you you and we're kind of on the same page but I think I wouldn't have been on the same page if your team wasn't actually letting yeah. me know because sometimes you don't even know what's happening in UG or TZ yeah. so yeah. I appreciate you know your team Thank and you I appreciate guys. all Africans trying to cross promote themselves within yeah. the region. Thank you so much. Mm. Anyko. That means a lot. Um, my team, like today when we were, yesterday we were doing a, a song, we slept really late and then today morning I couldn't wake up as I <laughs> And then they kept ringing yeah, that bell. They, they were like, Pia is just <laughs> waking up. I was like, that's fine, that's fine. I totally understand. <laughs> if you don't have a team that pushes you and like tries to make you a better person, 
you really can't go far in this industry. This industry, most times I wake up and I'm like, really, why am I doing this? Yeah. I have a team, I have a manager who grounds me and talks sense to me and tries to speak encouragement and motivation. Sometimes that is low. Like you've run low on motivation and you're high on anxiety. You're just, okay, I'm going to perform, <laughs> but ah, I don't. And then you have people that are just, we believe in you. We love what you do. We, you're good. You're this. I really can I can't replace that with money, I swear. Hmm. It means a lot to me. So thank you, Team FBM. I love you so much, guys. And I hope we bring that Grammy. We started the Grammy. We are going to win a Grammy. Um, uh, how can I crusade? Like, uh, uh, it's like, um, there is a word for it. Is it campaign? Campaign, that is it. Yeah. So every time I'm in studio, my manager is like, do you want the Grammy or not? <laughs> <laughs> You're so, like, I, I do, I, I do. The Grammy. I the Grammy. <laughs> and Eddie Kenzo last year was nominated in the Grammy. Of course. You know, in Uganda, we, we, we see a Grammy and we're like, ah, that's so, ah, it's so Nigerian. You always see it. that it is so far so until far. Yeah. Eddie gets nominated and like, I, I, I didn't realize it's this close. Yeah. When he got nominated, I said, if that, if Eddie Kenzo, a person who didn't even know how to say English. Mm. A person who was told can't sing. And there's another um, Ugandan artist not based in Uganda, Angelina. Angelina. Her song She's is on London. Billboard Top 100, top, she... top 10. Her song is like number seven. Oh, yeah. There I'm a with Kina Rema. So, a big fan. again, Uganda on the map, right? Uganda to the world. Uh, yesterday, I told a, a Kenyan that Uganda, we are going to lead in this East African. <laughs> They and took you offense. know what he replied? That's true. That is very true. Because you guys are serious, and then your music is global. And then I said, oh, my God, if even people that should be feeling like they're our competition are saying we mm. can, then I feel like yeah, we can. Aye, for me, I think <laughs> you all have always been on, on a different level, I always say. I think someone needs to come to Uganda to see how the industry operates, to know why you are ahead in many ways. Yeah. It's like when I'm in Uganda, I put on the radio and Pierre, con Pierre Pound's concert is national news. That never happens in Kenya. You know, For you really? hear the fuel prices have gone up. Pierre Pound has announced she has a concert in December. Like, I love that about Uganda. You people take entertainment and artists so seriously, seriously. even though there's a flip side where yeah. there's also very negative yeah. um, uh, what is it like attention sometimes yeah. you know on the media but yeah. that's just the nature of the business yeah um, i mean it's it's what it is sometimes you're good sometimes even when you're like for example for us we have an issue of piracy our songs i could i could release a song today and then everybody has it but i'm not making a coin mm. because people are getting the song for free i could even go perform for free i could even go pay a station to play my music. So we have that issue, but we recently formed a, a federation, and I hope so much that they really, really put our issues, they sort our issues so we can shine. We have a lot of talent in Uganda. And then for you to even make it, uh, to be a um, household name, you need a lot of work. Because the competition, like you keep quiet for three months, someone already has a hit. This one, so it's a very active, active industry. But then I admire the Kenyan industry so much. Why? Kenya, an artist will make a hit in 20, 2009. And in 2020, they are still being <laughs> held for that <laughs> hit there. Like, oh my God. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> In Uganda, it doesn't happen. But is that a good you. thing? Is that a good thing? I think... Yes, it is. Because guys being making a hit song is not easy. Yeah. And, and not to a first one. You know, some songs, they can promote it yeah, a million yeah, yeah, times. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then there is a song that just grows. I know And what people you mean. love it, and okay. it becomes timeless. In Uganda, you will be forgotten after your song. Yeah, you have to, like, really keep pushing and pushing and making yourself relevant and being... <laughs> you, you can having a hit doesn't mean that okay so now that i have a hit uh, let me just no i can chill mm -mm. no actually when you get a hit that's when you now need to work harder, harder and, and harder. harder and harder so for me i'm on now that pressure because my fans in uganda be like we need another hit <laughs> and angrily <laughs> 
I come, I put something on my socials and they're just the comments down there. They're just asking for another hit, another hit, another wow. hit. Like I wish you guys know what it means and what it takes to make that other hit. Mm. But uh, I, I'm praying for the hit as well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so, much so much for too. coming to VIP Access. I've really Access. enjoyed this. It was so amazing. <laughs> So amazing, and um, I wish you well in everything you you know put your hands to in this 2024. Obviously, Kenya is your home. You know, welcome back anytime. Thank you. Uh, thank you to your team for bringing you over here. I appreciate um, Peer Pounds Management. Everybody um, who you know is behind you, they're doing a great job, and I hope they continue to do that. Um, those who are listening to VIP Access, thank you so much. This week's guest was Pia Pound from Kampara, Uganda. Please go there and follow her social media handles. She has um, another hit song about to drop. She has a full album about to drop, so let's support her. Um, and uh, let's just uplift her. She's a dope artist. She's a dope creative. She's a dope fashionista. And uh, for those who are following VIP Access, continue to spread the good messages. We are on social media via TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and um, every week we are releasing new episodes on Tuesday. Uh, we are also syndicated in Ghana, so you can watch VAP Access uh, on MX24 TV every Tuesdays and every Saturdays. Next week, I will be back with yet another amazing individual and personality who's going to inspire you. Thank you. VIP Access Season 4 is proudly supported by the Australian High Commission.